Alright, welcome back to Epicus Gamicus Metallicus. Uh, doing another episode of more metal than metal. We're uh, back um, back to Nawabum from two weeks ago when we did our pre Nawabum episode, which went way longer than we were expecting. Oh, yeah, that. We spent so much time going on, off on pre Nawabum. We were like at the end, like, oh my god, one yeah. hour. <laughs> we'll, probably, we'll probably try to keep this episode a little shorter than that. Oh, I don't know about. Man. Considering, I mean, I think New Album might even take us longer. Cause, yeah. Because, I mean, pre-New Album, we we're pretty, we we're pretty uh, set on those albums, but we're, I think we're even more set on New Album. Oh, yeah. I think, you know, there's definitely, there's a lot to talk about pre-New Album, there's a lot to talk about New Album, but I guess we can only find out when we actually get started, but, um, but, uh, yeah, I guess this is Jack and Sean, we're going to get started on New Album, right? Yep. All right. Uh, so we're starting at number ten. My number ten is Wildcat by the Tigers of Pantang. Uh, more. I picked this album more because the album is epic. If you look at it, it's just like a a, a tiger, like full roar. It's very impressive. And I don't think it, it doesn't actually have the the Tigers from Pantang song that that I like, which is Gangland, which is I think on the next album, which is called Spellbound. But the t Tigers have a really powerful sound. I think they're one of the closer bands to moving towards thrash metal. Yeah. Than, uh, say, another band like Saxon. Yeah, I think New Album's kind of split between some bands being more punkish, where it has that punkish feel to it. Yeah. It adds to that. And then you get, you get um, that thrash metal feel. Yeah, Tigers you know. definitely have that feel. Yeah, Tigers of Pantan, I'd say, yeah, I'd, I'd agree. They kind of have more of that feel. Um, although, to be fair, a lot of those bands that have that feel, I feel like they were kind of much lesser known. I feel oh, like yeah, the bands. yeah. They definitely were not as successful as, say, Iron Maiden. Yeah, you know. So you don't you don't have as much success with bands like Tigers of Pantang, but but you do have important albums like Wildcat, I think. Yeah. You know, because it, it is a pretty important album. Um... With that in mind, uh, we'll just go ahead and because we don't want to spend too much time talking about certain albums that uh, we don't know much about. <laughs> yeah, so we'll go ahead and move on to my ten. Um, I put "Give 'Em Hell" by Witchfind, which is a, uh, it's kind of an it's kind of an album that um, or at least when you get like the debut song, the "Give 'Em Hell," it's kind of like one of those fighting songs, you know, "Give 'Em Hell." Yeah, like it's. It's really one of those one of those albums that you can listen to, and it really pumps you up, you know. Yeah. Um, it's a pretty it's a pretty good album, I I think. Mm -hmm. Um, what's funny is with the album cover, you kind of you kind of get a feeling that um that it's like uh this is gonna be like really really heavy shit. Yeah, and then it's sort of. And then it's just kind of like it's just it's just regular heavy metal. It's just yeah. regular new album. You know, it's nothing, nothing, nothing extreme like like um, other bands that came out later. Yeah. But um, with that, at least with like with like black metal and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I give them hell. It's kind of that kind of that uh, gateway, I get, suppose, into that black metal stuff. You know. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, early contributor. Yeah, I think at least to the feel of it. Um, yeah, you know, um, I think it's an important album. Maybe not quite as important as other other bands that that came out with new album but I, I would say uh i would say it was a pretty important album you know um pretty pretty good album i'd say you yeah know? i think it's deserving of 10 yeah, i feel like our, our lower albums are going to be sort of like yeah we like it but it's not like it. but it's not quite as influential as yeah. later albums you know it's so. it's a good album but you know such as At least we have more to say about it than, <laughs> than Wildcat, you know? Yeah. Such as my number nine, which is uh, Hit and Run by Girl School. And I'm a big fan of Girl School because they're one of the, the New Album bands that have a lot of power to them. You really get, uh, you know, it's a sense of motion. I guess yeah. it's the same thing with Tigers. You get that uh, punkish feel. And Girl School are probably one of the best um, all-girl metal bands one of the few that I think actually surpassed their male counterparts. In a lot of ways, yeah, I agree. I, I think they're probably, in a lot of ways, I think, yeah. 
I think they they set kind of the standard in the heavy metal. Yeah. And, you know, and I don't, I don't I don't even like calling them an all all female band because they're just I just consider them a heavy metal yeah. band because I think. I think, I think they're worthy to be classified that's as just a heavy metal. That's band. what's good about them is there's nothing like girlish about. There's Girl nothing School. like there's they nothing are, gimmicky. They're, they're not, just as metal as all of their contemporaries were. They're just as mellow as like Motorhead, um, Iron Maiden, yeah, and other bands. Yeah, and I don't think that's that's really the thing. That, yeah, I agree. That's really something I like about Girl School. They're 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 that heavy metal and and they you know they're just a heavy metal band. And you know, I think that's I think I think one of them, or one of the members of the band, kind of said that that's kind of what they were hoping to be, not just like, oh, we're remembered as an all female band. That's it. Yeah, it's like the you know? quote uh, Lemmy was talking about one of his guitar. I think he's guess his guitarist was making fun of the girl school guitarist, and he's like, he's better than you, man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of funny. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, I think you know, and I respect that. I respect girl school. I think they're a very good band. Yeah. Um, but um, your number with, nine? Yeah, we'll go ahead and I guess we'll go ahead and move on to my number nine. Uh, I put um, "See You in Hell" by Grim Reaper. A lot of my albums, you'll you'll probably you probably already notice the with my first one. Um, that Pretty obscure. They're a little bit more obscure acts. Um, I will get into more more known acts later, but um, but um, I had Grim Reaper because um, I think they I think they released they released uh, "See You in Hell" and that was a very good album. I think. Um, came a little bit at kind of near the end of new album kind of like in 1983 kind of near the end but um even with that being said man it's a powerful powerful album i think yeah it's um you got you got i mean the view talent already blows you away but see you in hell i mean what do you think I, i'm think? i'm thinking um See, the it problem was, is, I listened to the albums a week ago, so I'm having trouble remembering which one's which. Which song's which? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's just the debut song. I, I think that's, you know, it's very, very memorable. And really, the I whole seem to remember album, it being good, but... Yeah, it was... <laughs> I can't confirm that. It was really, uh... It was really good. Uh, it was a really good, good, good album. Um... Although, I, I do... I, I think I put this above Witchfind, because I find this to be a little bit more heavy than Witchfind. Personally, I feel like it's kind of more heavy than that, um, you know. So I think I think it, I think it deserves its place to number nine on my list. Yeah. With that, with All that right. being said. So uh, my number eight is Black Metal by Venom. Uh, the, I guess I guess the album which defines black metal with the title track. Although, as Sean will tell you. Venom are not black metal. They're more of thrash metal. Yeah, they're they're, they're they're. I mean, as influential as they were in black metal, I, I wouldn't call it a black metal album. Yeah, they it's, don't have like the, the the drums or anything like that. They just don't. They don't have. They have the production value of black metal. Yeah, they definitely with, got with that, that album. <laughs> with that album, but um, is it is it really black metal? Yeah, uh, I think black metal kind of developed into its own little thing. I don't feel like classifying as black metal is really fitting for. So apparently, apparently, side it. side A is black and side B is metal. Yeah. <laughs> so it, so it's just its own genre. Black. It's just yeah. black. Yeah, it's just black. But um, I like that album because it has the song "Buried Alive" on it, which is pretty entertaining. Oh yeah, I love that song. As they lower me down into that. Oh, that's yeah, stuff. I love the beginning of that song. I love like how the song connects with the next song, "Raise the Dead." Yeah. It's just like. It, it just cuts, and then it goes to that yeah. song. Venom are definitely, they're like a bad horror movie. They're just trying to be creepy, but it's just so terrible that it's hilarious. I don't know. I, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't see, I don't, like, I don't see them as that. I, I kind of see them as just an entertaining, uh -huh. not exactly thrash metal, but they're kind of more, I, I'd consider it speed metal, personally. Yeah. I feel like it fits more under speed metal. Yeah, because it doesn't have thrash. It doesn't have that many thrash elements, like the and double beat drums a you, lot. You'll hear us and, argue about thrash metal when we ever get around to uploading an old episode we did for something else. Yeah, thrash I think, metal. you know, um, I think for, for, it, for, you know, um, for it to be thrash metal, it has to have, like, that double beat drums a lot, you know? Yeah. It has to be doing that. It, the rhythm structure has to be fitting. It has to be kind of fast but a little bit. this episode's know? not about thrash. That's Let's true, move on. so, yeah, we'll, <laughs> to we'll your go ahead number and move eight. on. Um, sorry. Uh, oh, yeah, nice. I put, um, 
I put Dim in Leather by Saxon. This is a this is one of those albums we were talking about earlier where where um we're putting on songs that uh that are probably not fitting for um new album maybe, at least in the punk feel. Um Dim and Leather is um definitely one of those albums that's kinda of more of a kinda of more of a traditional you know, yeah they're really just they're just carrying on the, the judas priest sound really yeah so. kind of they're not they're not really they're not pushing they're not like pushing it into a more punk direction like a uh, band like obviously which fine grim reaper as Although, i discussed earlier were kind of and especially venom let's be honest saxon was one of the more successful metal bands yes it's like it's it's like with iron maiden i mean yeah. It just that sound just just really yeah. resonated well, with a lot. Of I think the thing with Saxon time. is Saxon have a, an American feel, so they sell really well over here. Yeah, I think so. And they're certainly very popular in San Antonio for some weird reason. I don't know why it's, they are, but yeah, it's kind of kind of strange. But yeah, um, yeah. That being said, um, there's there's some good old classics, you know, like Princess of the Night, Denim you know, and Leather, Dim and Leather, obviously, you know, one. the debut song, but um. Yeah, and then they have some good rock anthems, kind of. I yeah. call them rock anthems because it's kind of more rockish sounding in some ways, you know, where where they kind of sing about their own band, you know, and oh, then they kind of yeah. sing about other bands. Yeah, it's definitely, that's a, definitely the key thing with the album is that they they sung about we are metal bands, and we're gonna identify as metal bands and sing about it and all that stuff. Yeah, kind of. They kind of did a little bit of both, a little bit where they kind of identify themselves as rock and metal. Yeah. Cause they, cause Venom did that at least with, um, cause they did in their, their song Black Metal. I mean, they're like, the gods rock and roll. Yeah, all you that know. Stuff. So, they they kind of had like a where they're kind of dipping their feet in both puddles a mm -hmm. little bit, but um, yeah, this is about the time I think when you start getting metal used a little bit more to yeah. distinguish some of these bands, you know, from the rock that's obviously a little bit not as heavy, but um. Yeah. Moving on, but yeah, um, the one last statement on Saxon. Um, with as good as this album is, I don't. Feel, I feel like eight's probably a good spot for it because it's not. You know, it's not quite as good as some of their other albums, but I do think it's an important album. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and move on to seven. Right, we're back at another witch find because it's Witch Finder General, which, <laughs> and the album is Death Penalty, which I actually. But, to be fair, they—I mean—they spelled "witch find" differently than yeah, "witch they find." They kind of. But I almost—I almost thought I thought they had a debut. They had a song. Their album was called "Witch Finder General," but apparently not. It's actually "Death Penalty," but whatever. Um, it's an interesting album cover, I must say. Oh yeah, it's like a lo-fi uh, in front of a church with some stuff going on. Yeah, it's 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 um. What was it again? But it's, yeah, it's an interesting. Yeah, I'm a big fan of "Witch Finder General" because they've got a, they're sort of a. I just describe it like rolling band. They're kind of that proto doom, but they're kind of slightly faster than doom. Yeah, it's like kind of the album's just kind of yeah, it's just like kind of executing some just, weird weird stuffs you know, going on on the album cover. <laughs> it's an it's an interesting album it's cover. Pretty funny. It's it's definitely a definitely a pretty good album. Um, Especially the title track, which find or well not title track band track. Oh, well, apparently the the model on the front is. Uh, Joanne Latham. Who's that? She's a former English glamour model. Okay. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Uh, let's talk about the album. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about doom metal. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of the earlier doom metal stuff, like the de like Wish Fun General, obviously, and like um, is it Candlemass? Candlemass are pretty good. Yeah, Candlemass is a pretty good band. They're very they're very good. Uh, doom original doom metal, you know. Yeah, classic doom is always good fun. Yeah, it is. It is. I agree. And Witch Finder General is definitely that progenitor to it, you know? Yeah. Um, so you're number six. Yeah, I guess we'll, yeah, we're, 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 we're rolling skipping. along. Rolling along, rolling along. Um, so I put The Unexpected Guest by Demon, which um, Demon, in my opinion, is kind of an underrated band. Um, the Unexpected Guest is, is um, it's kind of a mix of... Um, of being that um yeah what do you, what what would you what would you call it like kind of being like rock and I guess and new album 
in some ways. Yeah, not quite Most, as heavy as they could have been. Yeah, Mo- I mean a lot of, like when, whenever you got um whenever you got um songs like um ah, what do you what do you call it? <laughs> uh, I'm 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 trying to think of like the way to describe it. It's like um like because when you when you get the original song. Um, you get, uh, kind of the, <laughs> you're, you're laughing at me, Jack, because yeah. I'm having a hard time, time uh-huh. saying it, but, um, God, there's he's like, like, he's also he trying to Google the album and he can't find to... it on Wikipedia, so it's really funny. Oh, I'm, um, <laughs> D-Mom, D-Mom <laughs> is not going to find you the right thing. <laughs> wow. I am, okay. I am failing hard here i'm i'm so, so sorry yes yeah. i am failing hard he's trying he's trying to stall so he can get enough time <laughs> to get to the album on wikipedia <laughs> there we go it's actually not shown on wikipedia <laughs> the, and the albums don't have pages on wikipedia we are it's so <laughs> okay do you have anything to say now that you can't find it well i do um it is a good album um it kind of starts out with the debut you know um don't break the circle um very yeah. good very good metal um, you know, you kind of get, you get really good solos from this band, you know, and, um, uh, you know, they're talking about Banger TV, how this album kind of has a disturbing kind of album cover, which is kind of interesting because it's kind of like Witch Find, Give Them Hell, where it's, it doesn't really fit the music because it's not as extreme yeah. as you expect it to be. At least with like Venom, it's kind of, it is kind of extreme yeah, I feel in like some ways. You get that feel in Nuava because they couldn't really foresee like death metal, I guess back so. in 1980, that would. Be... I guess for its time, it was kind of heavy. I get. I suppose. I mean, that's about as heavy as music was at that point. So it's... yeah, so you kind of get that feel. But, but um, as you can tell from my earlier experience going through Wikipedia, Demon are it's... not very popular. <laughs> yeah, they didn't. They didn't get that popularity. Um, I think they're only really known in England, really. Yeah. In like pubs and stuff. In pubs. Yeah, I mean, they didn't. Unfortunately, they didn't get that popularity. They kind of, I think, they even kind of moved away from doing new album. They kind of went more progressive rock after that. But yeah, but um, yeah, it was a very good album. Very good album. Yeah. Um, so moving on. Yeah, I guess we'll move on to your number five. My number. Oh, number, number six. six, which is back to Saxon with Wheels of Steel. Wait a minute, I think I skipped my number seven. Did you? Yeah, I did. You were talking your number seven. I skipped my Oopsie number seven. Daisy. Um, back to seven. <laughs> back to seven. Oh man, I am I'm losing it today. So um, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll I'll go ahead and say my number seven. So I put in my number seven is Tank. Um, Tank's a or it's uh the Filth Hound of Hades. That's the album I put. Um, yeah, you can't just Google Tank and expect yeah. the album. That happens to me all the time. You Google the you Google the name and then you. Think, oh wait, kiss means something else. Oopsie daisy. Know, right? You have to. We have to get like a site that that like just has. That just assumes you're looking for bands. Yeah, it just it doesn't it doesn't like give you that kind of crap. Well, I mean, there is a web there is a website. What is it called? The Encyclopedia Metal, Metallium or something. That one. Yeah, but it's just albums. it doesn't really. It's just it's just metal though. It yeah, that's really the annoying me. thing. It's like, it what if really I want to look up an EDM band? Yeah, it's like but it's anyway, really back helpful. to the album. Yeah. Tank, um, touch screen. Yeah. So yeah, it's just this. Um, and now this album, I actually do remember listening to. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty good album. Um, it's it's maybe not as good as the number six I described, in my opinion, but um, that uh, I somehow I skipped for this album. But uh, yeah. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about this album. Um, what do you think about the the the, the kind of the beginning of this album shell shock um see the song i remember is the heavy artillery song yeah that's <laughs> interesting and and i was like this is an interesting song and then I realized oh wait the band's called tank of course they have a song called heavy artillery that makes oh sense. yeah i mean that's that's kind of you know what song i really I, I really i really like blood guts and beer i really Great like song, that song though. yeah I, I love that song because um it really it really gives you the feel for a new album i feel like yeah in some ways you know it, it it's got that heavy it's got that that riff you know and then it's got it's got that party riff kind of yeah of new album kind of that heavy metal feel to it yeah. maybe not party but party. but it's like a heavy metal party i guess you could say 
yeah. heavy metal. You know, it's it's kind of that heavy metal anthem. I think that's the best way to describe it. Yeah, that's what a know? lot of a lot of new album bands are going for is to have that anthem. Yeah, it does. It does have that heavy metal anthem that. Oh, because you wanted to get on those Soundhouse uh, charts, right? That's right. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's kind of like that that uh, song you described from Judas Priest on Killing Machine. Oh yeah, uh, Take on the World. Yeah, you know, somewhat. Except this is maybe a little bit more. Uh, this song's a little bit more. Uh, how do you say? Heavy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, maybe. But um, that might be one way to describe it. You know what song I also love on this album? Who needs to love songs? <laughs> Who needs to love? That's good. This is such a silly song. It's like, it's, it, it's like weird because it doesn't really fit on this album. Oh no! It's just kind of strange. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of like that outlier a little bit, you know. It's They're kind of an outlier. Making fun of somebody. Yeah, I guess. It's, it's um, I don't know. Can we talk about Saxon yeah. now? Yeah, I guess we'll, uh, we'll let's go. Let's go to the album that that I skipped. Let's go. Um, let's go. Let's go with Back your your six. So, um, I don't know, would you agree this is better than your album? Now, I would agree that I do think Wheels of Steel is better than Denim and Leather. This yeah. has a lot more iconic songs, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, you got Wheels of Steel, obviously. Yes. Classic motorcycle song. Yes. She's, um, She's got wheels, wheels of steel. Yeah, it works, works for us in Texas, where we've just got long, straight-ass roads. So you just, Wheels of Steel, cruise control, and it just... Flows along the freeway, right? What was the album's name again? Wheels of Steel. Oh yes. <laughs> I'm trying to look this up on on Wikipedia again. Yeah, and then of course you've yeah. got you've got the song Motorcycle Man, uh, which is again this is why they're popular in the U.S. because they sound like the U.S. Long straight roads, big bikes, that sort of thing. Yeah, this this one definitely has a faster feel to it, I think, than Denim and Leather. Yeah, Denim probably. and Leather was like. All right, let's chill out a little bit, guys. Let's let's calm down a little bit. And of course, we have to mention seven forty seven, more melodic song. Oh yeah, it's sort of like Great the, song. Uh, um, it's sort of like what metal ballads should be. I agree. I wish more bands did metal ballads like that. That weren't like ballads. Don't doesn't even have to be a love song. Let's do a I tragic agree. ballad instead. I agree. It's like with um, kind of like how Iron Maiden did on their debut a little bit kind of interesting yeah you get that you know we'll um, talk about that later we'll talk about <laughs> we'll talk about that later but but um i'm sorry i'm sorry i had to bring that up because i think that's because spoiler alert there's some iron maiden albums on this list of course you can't not include something of iron maiden but but uh, the reason i want to include that here is just because i think those i think it goes to our discussion of ballads just okay. a short little discussion you know i think that's what heavy metal ballads should be like but we'll go ahead and move on speaking of your number five What's your number five, Sean? Uh, do you want to go to my number five, or do you want to go... Oh. Oh, should I do my first? Okay. Yeah, yeah I think maybe you should go to yours. Just because I, I, I took away your opportunity, right. so... Okay, so mine Might is, as well take away mine. Mine is uh, Balls to the Wall by Accept, and yes, it's not it's not a British band, but we figured Accept were close enough to it's, being the Wall it came band. out It came out at the same time. Yeah, they're... So... They are the one exception that we're going to let foreign band be called British, British for that one. Very great album cover. Yeah, <laughs> a dude holding it like, a in, ball. like basically like his, what does he wear? Like he's barely any pants on. <laughs> he doesn't. And then he's got a ball. He's got, I don't think he's wearing any pants. Yeah, he's just wearing it's, his underwear. Whatever. It's kind of, it's kind of interesting. It's an interesting album cover. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say maybe it describes metal all that much. No, but it's I, not a very metal album cover. And I like, and they so like people like kind of assume that they were gay after that, and it's like. You're really surprised that people thought that <laughs> when you look at the album cover. Yeah, it's 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 an interesting album cover. I'm gonna be honest. I don't think it's an album cover I would wear on a shirt. No, probably not. <laughs> it's not. Well, I guess it's the same. Especially not without like the band's name and the. Yeah. Song. <laughs> Just <laughs> the picture. No name whatsoever. Just, oh, that would be. That would be. That I guess. Be I guess it's like the Scorpions kind of controversial album. So maybe it's just. German taste is a little bit different. Maybe. Um, well, what, not, even like with Restless and Wild, the album before that, uh, spoiler alert, we don't have that on our list, unfortunately. Oh, but um, even that doesn't like have have that kind of album cover. It's just yeah. burning guitars. That's yeah, yeah, it. Burning guitars. Yeah, it's like there's or nothing. The there's alternate. Nothing. 
for the alternate one, which is Let's talk the about band. songs, though, shall we? But yeah, let's go into the because songs. Because um, Balls to the Wall has the immortal track, Balls to the Wall. Yes, that was probably their most popular song off the album. Yeah. For sure. Well, probably the most popular song in general. Oh, yeah. And they, they definitely are the, the band songs. that most continued the Judas Priest sound with the dual guitars chugging along. Yes, for sure. I agree with that. I agree with that statement. And then, of course, you've got uh, Udo Dirk Schneider's vocals, which are just, like, uh, very unique. They're sort of, like, I guess they're kind of growlish, but they're he can do high... He sort of does high growls, I guess. Yeah, I think so. It's kind of weird. It's, yeah, you got that, that high growling, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then you got uh, other songs like London Leather Boys, which is not, 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 maybe not what you think. Um, I think it's about, it's about metalheads, right? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, it's kind of, kind of interesting. I mean, at first listen, you probably wouldn't guess that, but if you really check the lyrics, you do notice it is about, all right, it's, it's, well, it's like another denim and leather, basically. Yeah, kind of. It's just a different just way of... the metal scene in London. Or Hellbent for Leather, maybe. Yeah, that's sort of... Yeah, kind of kind of that. And so, now we can go on to your number five, which... Um, yeah, we'll go on... I guess we'll go on to number five now that I now that I kind of went off. Now that we're back on track? Yeah. Um, I think you're kind of you're kind of seeing a little bit of a rhythm here between our, our, uh, our stuff. I'm kind of, you know... Um, most of these most of these bands I think mainly come from England. That's why it's called New Wave British Heavy Metal and that's probably why except maybe is an outlier in that. Yeah, definitely. You know, they kinda of didn't really come from England. But um yeah, kind of unfortunate, but um or not really unfortunate, just yeah. I mean just, that's just the way the German scene works. It seems yeah. like the German scene is just sort of one big band at a time. Yeah. Like Scorpions, except Halloween, Rammstein. Yeah, it's kinda of interesting. Yeah. Um they definitely got more in the scene in extreme metal, but um, we'll go ahead and move on to uh, my number five, um, "Number of the Beast" by Iron Maiden. Oh um, yeah, probably one of their best albums. Um, probably one of the best albums made. Um, maybe not on this list, but um, still a really good album. Um, I mean, I I remember some of those iconic tracks. In the back of my head, I, I mean, mean I, I pretty much can sing every Iron Maiden song. So, um, I think "How Be Thy Name" probably yeah. one of their most popular songs. That's the, well, I wouldn't say most popular, most popular in metal. I think so. Because um, that, that, that's again, that's like a, it's almost a tragic ballad. "How Be Thy Name." Yeah, it is kind of that. That's again, yeah, that's goes into what I'm saying. Um, no, yeah, the most popular Iron Maiden song is definitely "Run to the Hills." Yes. But I think Run to the Hills well Yeah, Run to the Hills, I guess, yeah, yeah. I guess I can't I can't argue with that. And of course, it looks like a lot of the the, other popular ones are on the second side. Kind of oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah, I mean I guess the prisoner is kind of obscure, that's not I'm a big fan of the prisoner, but Yeah. Well, I like all the songs on the album, but um I remember trying to play The Umber of the Beast when I was young Good. my young days and playing the bass. Yeah. It was uh, a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I mean, very, very good, uh, very good tracks you have on that album. Yeah. Um, and Iron Maiden, Iron Maiden's a big potent band for me. It's basically the first metal band I listened to. So. Yeah. Playing it's, um, runs the hills on rock band, you know. Yeah, definitely, definitely, um, definitely a very good album. Very good, yeah. uh, very good song to you. That that the debut that their debut song for that album. But I would kind of say that Number of the Beast is kind of the first maybe album where they kind of moved away from the album, into the. I don't know why I'm melodic. calling these debut songs. Now that I think of it, it doesn't really make sense. First track. Yeah, it's just it, open, I, when it, I say debut open song, track, I'm talking track. about like the yeah. the the track that the it's just basically I mean like the the song yeah. the, of the album. But I don't know. It doesn't really mean anything. But um. Yeah, Run to the Hill is definitely their most popular. My favorite being How Be Thy Name, just because uh -oh. I love that ballad. I think it's such a great ballad. Yeah, I'd, I'd either be that one or Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner as my favorite. But um, That's not on this album, though. No, that's not so no. Power Slave. Yeah. Great album to you, but it's not unfortunately on the list. That kind of came out a little bit too late. Yeah, maybe. Power Slave but, is... Yeah, I think. That's after the album, basically. Yeah. So I guess I guess we'll go on to your number four. My number four and is Sean, something that I'm not going to agree with. Sean doesn't like Def Leppard. No, Leopard. I do not. I do not. But I put I the first Def Leppard album on through the night 
Oh, right here. don't even get me started. And I mean, and in fairness, De Onto the Night is the least mainstream Death Leopard album, but it is still more mainstream than the average in Wobbin Band. <sighs> there you go. They're the band that I think belongs the least on here. I'll be honest. Like, that's I don't think I'll ever agree with your number four. They're I can't even agree band. that you have it above Balls to the Wall. <laughs> that is such a better album than that. I'm not actually sure why it's above Balls to the Wall, but oh well. Well, well I guess we'll forgive it. Ooh. I guess the time for regrets is over, maybe. But but I feel like, I, it, as far as Def Leppard fans go, it's a very forgotten album. And it's got a lot of... I guess, I mean, Def Leppard fans, I guess they're kind of into the more of the hysteria songs, the pop... Those the crappy, poppy ones. Those crappy pop yeah. songs they release later. As, as Def Leppard goes down... They just go down, down, down. They were never... In my opinion, they were never really that great. I, I'm just... I'm sorry. I just hate Def Leppard so much. I really do not like Def Leppard. I think, like, every other band is better than Def Leppard. <laughs> I really don't like them. Gotta hate on Def Leppard. I'm just... Yeah, you can you can tell how much I hate Def Leppard. Like... I mean, that, this album's got like, songs like Rock Brigade, which is a pretty catchy song. And then yeah, I guess. Hello America, which kind of got them in trouble with a lot of Nawabin fans. <laughs> <laughs> thinking they're trying to uh, sell out to Americans or something. Well, they they sold out in other ways, so it's not like they need to sell out to yeah. Americans anyway. But I mean, they were always trying to be popular anyway. They didn't want to be part of new album in the first place, so. Yeah, that's why I hate putting them on any kind of new album list. They they just don't belong. They're just okay. another crappy. So so now onto an album that you can be happy about, Sean. Yes, that I can fin <laughs> finally be somewhat happy. Um, so for nine number four, I put a much superior album the night the night cumbers by Holocaust. Yeah. All right, I'm done bashing your I'm done bashing your choice. Okay. I'm done. I'm done. But um, we'll we'll, we'll talk about my album the night cumbers. Um, Holocaust is definitely one of those bands like that we were mentioning again that we were mentioning earlier was um oh you you looked up the movie. I didn't know there was a movie. Yeah, I didn't know there was a movie either. <laughs> um. Definitely one of those albums that I feel like um, was more known for being heavier, yeah. being more punkish. They're also one of the albums which, or one of the bands which has a name which is far more extreme than the actual band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like I, I like Holocaust would be like a death metal band, right? But no, Holocaust yeah. stole that long before anybody could get a chance to do anything. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. It's not really, it's not really a name that you probably think of a new album band yeah also the interesting thing is that they're probably one of the first scottish metal bands oh yeah um i think you know what i would say about this album i think this album is very very influential on like um if any of you know hellhammer's debut or i'm not hellhammer's debut it's um satanic rites I think this is kind of an influence because you have that beat structure kind of yeah. that you see on that demo. Mm -hmm. And obviously they went and formed Celtic Fro Celtic Frost later. Um, however you want to pronounce Celtic, yeah. Celtic. But um, they, they um, I think Holocaust definitely kind of had an influence on that kind of sound. Yeah. You know? I'm a big fan of the song of... Heavy Metal Mania. Great choice. Yeah, that is a good choice. I um, got heavy metal in my blood yeah it's a good song it's um um smoking vows is pretty good to you you know original song you know good good intro to the album um yeah i think this this song this album or album ha definitely has a lot of songs that uh have that beat structure that you'd see on <laughs> on maybe early thrash kind of maybe early death metal albums kind of yeah have that beat structure very good beat structure. Um, kind of wish there were more bands that kind of did that a little oh, bit, yeah. but they kind of moved on from doing that. But um, I guess we're done talking about Night yep. Cumbers as much Number as I love three, the album. which is another album that Sean doesn't agree with me on. Not that it's a bad album, it's just that he doesn't think it's no album. It's, it's, yeah, it's, um, I'll let you say the album first. It's uh, Heaven and Hell by Black Sabbath. I'll, I'll let you and talk I'll, uh, about the album first. I'll explain why I put it on the list, because I think that Black Sabbath with Dio was enough of a change from the Aussie era that it could be really considered a whole new band and it's definitely a whole new sound so and I think their sound is definitely an influenced by New Album they were trying to come out with so they didn't want to just try and copy Aussie so they tried something new using 
uh, Ronnie James Dio from Rainbow, and Heaven and Hell is what they ended up with. Yeah. So I'll explain kind of my disagreement with it. Um, the reason I wouldn't put it on the list because I think there are other bands that I think deserve to be on here. Not that I don't like Black Sabbath. They're a great band, obviously. Yeah. It's just for a new album list, I just don't think it's fitting. I yeah. just think we should include bands that are, like have always been new album. But I don't, I don't think we should include something where they changed when they had another band member. Yeah. You know, I just don't I don't feel like it fits personally. But but I think but um talking about let's talk about let's it. talk about the album. Let's yeah. actually talk about the album. Is Heaven and Hell a more new album album? It definitely has a more f- faster structure than some early Black Sabbath albums. Um yeah. Black Sabbath's early albums are a little bit slower paced than this one. Oh, yeah, this one's pretty when, fast. Yeah, this one's a little bit faster with uh with the, you know, Heaven and Hell. And um, Neon Knights and stuff, and Children of the Sea and all that. So it's it's definitely more fitting as as a new album album than just the old stuff that they were doing. Yeah, because it's definitely a little bit more different. Um, and it's, it is appreciated that they didn't try to copy off Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah. After you know, and even I, though you know Dio's era wasn't as popular. Yeah. For Black I think Sabbath. It's, it's just a shame that we're never going to hear these songs played by Black Sabbath ever again because there's no way Ozzy's well, going to sing a Dio song. Well, that and the, Black Sabbath is pretty much done. Yeah, Black Sabbath is pretty much it's, done. It's done. Like, they're, they're, they're not going to play anymore. And that, that's the worst thing about the band, um, The Last in Line, which is made up of all the old members of Dio. They only play Dio songs, and it's like, yeah, there were a couple good Dio songs, but most of his best stuff was in Rainbow and Sabbath, so... Yeah, it's I feel like they should get the... I mean, it's not because Rainbow... It, well, I guess they played a tour recently, but they're not really a band anymore, and Black Sabbath doesn't need the song, so why can't... Black I suppose. It, it, sometimes it's hard to get the rights, but... Yeah. Talk, go, talking about the album, so my, my overall my overall opinion is it's a great album, and and it's definitely different from what they've been doing. I just don't... It's just my objection was that I would rather consider a band that has always been new album, yeah. personally, and but has I, always been releasing new album content... I just don't think it's fitting here. But I think it's always overshadowed by Paranoid and Black Sabbath. So, I, I'm, if we I'm don't not... mention it here, where are we going to mention it? Well, I, yeah, that's true. Well, I think we'd mention it in Black if we ever talked about Black Sabbath's albums. But I suppose. Um, I suppose, but um, yeah, it's just for a new album, album, it just I don't feel like it fits personally. Yeah. So you're number three. Um, so I put my number three um, as uh, "Lightning to the Nations" by Diamond Head. Um, Diamond Head is a band that I, I, is really underrated, even with like Metallica giving them some popularity. Yeah, yeah I still think they're so underrated because their their debut album, "Lightning to the Nations." Oh no, I don't think it was their debut. Actually, was it their debut? It's this, it's definitely the album that I remember. Um, but yeah, it's a debut. Is their debut okay? I just want to make sure. I want to make. I want to make sure I got that right, because I know they had problems getting this album out. Yeah, I remember. Honestly, um, I think Diamond Head are almost overrated. I mean, I don't really see how they're any better than any other new album band. Dude, are you kidding me? Am I evil? Like that's, yeah, that's like a good song, but I don't one of the best songs. The rest of I'm electric. Is good. I think no, I I disagree. I think it's a really. Well, good I'm album. not saying they're bad. I'm saying they're. At least equal with a band like Witchfinder General or Tigers of Pantang. I suppose I, I just I like to put them high because I think they're so I think they've done such great work. Yeah, and they were definitely I a think, massive influence on Metallica. Yes, well, I think in other thrash metal probably acts too, but yeah, but mostly Metallica. Mostly Metallica. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't argue with you there. Um, and those songs that we mentioned, I'm Electric or It's Electric, and. Uh, Am I Evil? Definitely um, their most popular albums. Or songs, songs off the album. Um, unfortunately, the, and, and I feel like I had to include Diamond Head somewhere. And I include it so high because I just love the album. I love the feel of the album. Mm-hmm. I just love the whole album, personally. But, um, I don't know. It, it's I think it's an important album. And it's really the only album by Diamond Head that I feel like is really good enough to put on a list like this, yeah. personally. But, um, I guess. That being said, um, I definitely like it more than your number four. So, okay, I'm done making fun. I'm sorry. I know I'm done making fun of your number four. I'm sorry. You've been done for a while. You still do it. Uh, it's it's so hard my, not to you. My number two. 
Yeah, we'll go on. Which is an album that you definitely will not complain about because no, it's Ace of Spades by Motorhead, the original. My probably my favorite band. Is this your favorite album by them or? No. Okay, you mean more. You'll you'll see. You'll see. You'll see. You'll learn what that is later. Yes. But yeah, I'm a big fan of Ace of Spades. It's the Motorhead album that I bought, so I know all the songs on it. Huge fan of the album. Yeah. Not my favorite, but a huge fan of the album. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you got Ace of Spades, their most famous track. Uh, and then you got cool songs like Love Me Like a Reptile, which has this great bass riff in it. Oh, yeah. And then, like, obviously, Lemmy's bass riffs sound like guitar riffs, which is really always really interesting. Uh, what else? Oh, We Are the Road Crew. That's always an entertaining song. Yeah. Um, yeah, there are definitely a lot of uh, songs on there that were that were pretty they were pretty good um yeah. i you gotta love we are the road crew we are the road crew da, na, na, na. that was even featured on brutal legend yeah of course oh. brutal legend featured a lot of motorhead songs and well because it features lemmy that's true so would, good it? point well it also featured yeah. i don't feel like it featured as much like Judas priest and stuff though did it i don't, I don't feel like it, i'd have to go back and look but i feel like it really focused on lemmy be honest it wasn't a very good game so about it was a, it was a mixed title, but but the only reason I mention it because I I feel like this album kind of has like some of the popular songs. Yeah. Um. But yeah, there are a lot of popular songs on here. You got you gotta love the song title "Jailbait." Yeah. Oh, that one's good. Yeah, great. Course, and there's also a great, great story behind the album cover because it looks like it was shot in the desert, but all they had to do was go out to a quarry. So oh, it was actually shot perfect. in the UK in a quarry. It wasn't even, yeah, it wasn't even that far. Yeah. You but, always think that about movies where they're shot in certain places, but they end up being in entirely different places. Yeah, it's nowhere near where you expect. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Um, so, I guess with that said, yeah, Ace we'll of Spades, excellent album. Excellent album, yes. So, we'll move on to mine. Um, uh, so, I put Angel Witch's debut album, Angel Witch. Um great album i think um mm -hmm. i think it has some very good obviously their first song on the album is probably what most people will remember you're an angel witch you're, you're an angel, angel witch i always go back <laughs> always go back to that. Yeah, you know I in some that ways song. that kind of sound that kind of sounds like it could be like a be like an oz legends or ozzy oz no 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 um it, it feels like that's like a song you could sing to you on like the legend of oz like just oh. like you're an angel witch you're an angel <laughs> witch. Like while you're like, w like it's skipping not, it's, along it's the Olympic good road. Metal song is it? But I it's guess very so. Catchy and very it's so catchy. It's it is kind of a metal song though. Yeah. It is kind of a little bit. It's just it's a song that you can sing along and not yeah. have it be metal. It's just it's just it's kind of one of those songs. You and know? then of course it's got um, White Witch on it, which is the one I'm. Which was the one I knew before. It would be only been great if they just had like a bunch of names and then just witch cool. at the end. No, I like no, I like how we have there's two witch finder bands and then there's an then there's angel, angel witch. witch. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's just a lot of witch, what a witch, witch referencing in yeah. New Orleans. Well, witches are pretty evil. I mean, let's be yeah. let's be real here. I mean, it's kind of funny you have angel witch, something that's considered pure good, and something that's considered kind of pure evil. Maybe not pure evil, but but they both represent the same sort of sound. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Well, it's kind of um, like, it's kind of like Lamb of God, kind of nicked the name. Which really should be a Christian metal band, but Lamb of God has the name. So, and then you have the original Angel of Death on this album. <laughs> oh yeah, I noticed that Angel of Death, <laughs> which is maybe not the most fitting song for this band. Maybe not. Probably not. No. No, but um, uh, yeah, it's a good album. Um, so you want to go into our honorable mentions? Yeah, I think so. All right, so mine. I'm not really sure it is a new album band, but they they started in the UK in the in the early '80s, so I guess they sort of are the uh, the Michael Schenker group uh, self titled debut album. And even though Michael Schenker is German, he did start the band in the UK, so they are a British band. They're technically they're not like except where they formed in Germany. Yeah, and they have no ties to the UK at all. Yeah, but yeah, Michael Schenker, former guitarist from UFO and Scorpions, his own band. He's got some good interesting. Definitely some interesting guitar work on his albums. That sounds kind of like a, like Motorhead, where Motorhead was like Lemmy was a part of Hawkwind, 
and then he went and formed Motorhead. Yeah. And that's how it became part of New Album. Mm-hmm. You know, even though he was around before a New Album, technically, but yeah. So that's my honorable mention. What's yours? Um, so I put Welcome to Hell by Venom. Um, Welcome to Hell was definitely a good album. Um, not quite as influential as Black Metal. Yeah. Um, I, I'd say that it's just as good as Black Metal, though. Yeah, it's about as good, I'd say. Um, yeah, it is a very good album, but um, not quite as influential. Mm-hmm. Um, not a lot to say about that album, I don't yep. think. It was just it's kind of Venom. a speed metal. It's Venom. It's a speed metal album. Not as much to say about it as Black Metal, because Black Metal is a lot more influential than, oh. than, than Welcome to Hell was. No more, no. Although, I will say, before we get to number one, the Welcome to Hell was kind of an influence on like Slayer, I'd say, and other thrash yeah. metal, early thrash metal acts. Especially by his first album, which they yeah. just sound like a Venom clone anyway. <laughs> kind of, but but yeah, they kind of moved away from doing that. Yeah, kinda. yeah. If they they are um, Slayer's Diamond Head for Metallica, like it's kind of funny because Tom Array is not a fan of Diamond Head. Really? No, he is not. That's what one of the reasons he rejected playing it. Uh, like when the big four were like in Bulgaria, I think he wouldn't play it live with everyone else, oh, which is kind of unfortunate. Everybody's like, hey, let's play Diamond Head. No, I'm he's not like, not. no, I don't like Diamond Head. Yeah, it was kind of let's unfortunate, but yeah, he wasn't kind of a fan of that. But so number we'll, one, we'll go on to number one. Oh, all we'll, right, we'll avoid covering any more drama topics. <laughs> My number anymore. one is the self-titled debut for Iron Maiden. Obviously, I had to have an Iron Maiden album on the list, and I think, I don't, I think that it the uh, the what's the first one? Fist bump. Um, no, I can't remember. Whatever the first vocalist was called. Um, there's the sound. It's before, um. Before Bruce Dickinson was more. I can I can look it up while you're talking about it. Okay. It's um. Paul Diano. Oh yeah. He was. I mean, I mean, definitely he was not as good a singer as Bruce Dickinson, but he was more he had that sort of you know, I mean he had short hair and sort of a punk singing style yeah it was definitely I think this album was a lot different from their other later albums but yeah got a lot of great songs like uh, title track obviously um, the instrumental Transylvania is always entertaining oh yeah and then songs like Running Free uh, Strange World and stuff like that I'll never I don't think I'll the two songs I won't forget are Prower and Phantom of the Opera I think for yeah. me at least yeah, Phantom of the Opera is an interesting one. Right? Yes, Bit Phantom long. of the Opera. Prower is not probably that interesting, but I prefer Prower. I think over Phantom of the Opera. Yeah, uh, I always found Phantom of the Opera was a bit too long, to be honest. Yeah, you know that is a problem I have with some some songs in heavy metal. They, they just go on forever. And ever. They go they go on too long. Yeah, it's like, just you like, can stop playing the song. Now. Yeah, you know, and that's you know. Okay, I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna backtrack, yeah. but. But yeah, I think yeah, I think some heavy metal albums are just they, their songs are just too damn long. Yeah. They just they go on and on and on. It's just sometimes they just need to cut them. Yeah, the yeah, Iron Maiden, the pretty much the poster child for a new album. Yes, for sure. Um, they're I think you know what I think all of, of all the bands in new album they're probably the most popular. Definitely. Well. Motorhead's pretty close, but not No, close. they're not anywhere near as close to Iron Maiden. Really? No. Yeah, I guess Iron Maiden have a lot of mainstream. I, like, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I didn't hear about Motorhead until, like, I didn't, like, get into Motorhead until, like, I, I can't remember what, what got me into Motorhead, but it was a while. Like, I knew I knew Iron Maiden long before I knew Motorhead. Yeah, I guess Iron Maiden are more mainstream. Yeah, they're very, they're very much more mainstream. Like even people outside of heavy the only, metal will it's the probably only, it's know the Iron only, Maiden. It's the only metal band that you ever see a black guy wearing a metal shirt, which yeah, is kind of weird. Yeah. I don't know what that. What's why do they like Iron Maiden but not nothing else? It's kind of weird. I, I, I suppose <laughs> it's um, weird. Um, yeah, I, I suppose. Yeah. Um, so I guess I'll I'll, 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 I'll go I'll go to my number one. Um, so I had to include a Motorhead song. Because Motorhead is my favorite band, and the album I decided was my, which one personally is my favorite Motorhead album, and I think one of the best albums of all time is um, Overkill. Yeah, I think yeah, I think that's such a great album. Um, you got Overkill, very first, first very double fast. Double bass. Yes, yes, probably one of the most important albums of all time, in my opinion. 
What do you think? Yeah, I think it's one of the most important songs of all time. That to you. I'm not sure about the whole album. Well, I think it's a very. I mean, I think there are people I agree with me, Jack. Yeah, well, I like Ace of Spades better. So you know what? You know what? (laughs) Your opinion's invalid because you put Def Leppard on your list. (laughs) (laughs) And of course, of course, the band Overkill named after the album. So I think that they are named after the album, aren't they? Yeah, I think so. I'd have to go look. I'd have to go look that up. But yeah, I think I think I would. That's a that's a band we're gonna have to talk about later. Yeah, okay. At least for me. Yeah. I mean, because I love that band, but. Thrash but, super um, fan over here. Oh yeah, that, that that's that's gonna be probably the episode I enjoy the most. I think that and maybe death metal too. <laughs> I think I'll enjoy those episodes a lot because I'm extreme, but um. Back, back to, um, back to, uh, Overkill. Um, very good album. Very good album. I, I, uh, I just think Overkill, the, the state song, the first song, will, is just masterpiece. Um, you got Damage Case, very good song. That was covered by Metallica. Overkill, of course, was also covered by Metallica. Um, he got Limb from Limb. It's some kind of hardcore songs there a little bit. Yeah. In some way. I won't pay your price. I love, I like that song, even though it's kind of more hard rockish. Yeah. Kind of, but... Yeah, I'm going to be honest. I prefer the the debut album to Overkill. Just because the debut album has that sort of raw feel to it. I actually do love the first album, but I, I have to say this album. I mean, you didn't see me, but I was shaking my head. Yeah, he's gone, no, no. No. I disapprove. Well, I, I've already disapproved, I think, enough of some of his stuff, but yeah. but um, but uh, yeah, um, very big fan of Overkill. Um, I I do think it's slightly better. I just think because Motorhead, the one song that I really like off that off that album is um Motorhead. Yeah. The other songs, like I kind of like. Technically, but a Hawkwind is, song. But what? Technically, Motorhead is a Hawkwind song. I suppose. Yeah, I think so, but. The rest, the rest of the songs, I, I like them, but I don't like love them like I love a lot of the songs on Overkill. Yeah. I don't love them as much as I love Overkill songs. Mm. It's just this one, I think, gets gets higher on my list, personally. Yeah. But I think that's our list. <laughs> yeah, um, we're done. Um, we've kind of we've kind of passed the 50-minute mark a little bit, yep. so I guess we'll talk about what we're going to do next. Um, next. So next week will be, what, the second episode of Mad Max? Yeah, I think so. We'll, we'll, we'll post our, our second. And then a week second. from that, we're going to rank the Ailstorm albums. So if, yeah, if you want to talk a little bit about Ailstorm, you kind of know a little bit about them. Um, yeah, so basically Ailstorm are pirate metal. And I'd say they're power metal, but a lot of people disagree with me when I say they're power metal. Like, oh no, they're pirate metal. And I'm like, well, pirate metal's not really a genre, is it? It's just a topic. It's not. Yeah, it's like it's like when people call like something dark metal. Like dark metal is not a that genre. Mean? It's just or all Viking means, metal. All, all that means is like yeah. Again, it's not. Yeah, it's not a genre. It's just a topic. Like yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't like the the it being Viking metal, de- dark metal, or whatever other things you add to it, or in this case, pirate metal. It doesn't really change the sound. It just it's just the lyrical content yeah. really. Yeah. It was, and, it's, so it was, and maybe you get like a few rhythmic structures that would that would be akin to maybe music of that period yeah. but that's really it yeah so Ailstorm is uh, definitely power metal more on the silly side very sing-along band like they sound like a bunch of drunk pirates yeah I think if anything you can maybe say they're kind of folk metal in some ways yeah maybe. they have a bit of a folk influence as well they're sort of halfway between power and folk really yeah but I think that's the most you could say I don't think you can say it's like oh it's pirate metal yeah. like it's an actual genre and of metal. they do use they do use an accordion which I guess is what pushes them into folk metal yeah I think it's just I think but um we won't we won't, we won't argue about that here yeah, so we're, we're already after we're already over 50 minutes yeah but. so we're gonna we're gonna listen to those albums and we'll let you know what we think yeah, we'll we'll, we'll kind of rank them. I think we'll we'll probably have a little bit maybe argument here and there. Yeah, but I I'm think, pretty pretty sure which one's going to be first, but we'll see. We'll, we'll yeah we'll 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 determine. We'll de- we'll have a we'll have a little uh, debate yeah. over some of the albums. We'll kind of talk mm-hmm. and argue about it. But um, I think we're we're gonna head out, Jack. Yep. Next time.